welcome back. We are continuing the series on minerals today, and I am talking about this guy. This crystal is one of the mineral rutile. Rutile is classified as a simple oxide. It is, in fact, a titanium dioxide, so yes, it is a good source of titanium. As you can see here, rutile's color, it looks pretty dark. Some might think it's a brown or blackish, but it actually has a reddish hue. I'd say it's more of a dark red, believe it or not, but if you can get a good look at it, it is more of a dark maroonish red color. In fact, the name rutile comes from the Latin rutilis, which refers to that reddish color. We describe the luster of rutile as certainly vitreous or glassy and definitely having a what we would call a gem quality brilliance to it like you can see in these crystals I have here. We could also even say this is a bit at least submetallic. The streak of rutile would be basically non-existent. It's not going to leave you much in the way of a streak. The hardness of rutile is around a 6 to 6.5, making it a fairly hard mineral, but still slightly softer than quartz. Crystals can be described as tetragonal. Now, it can also have a striated look to it, so that is one distinguishing feature of rutile, are striation patterns. You can also get rosette twins, an acicular pattern, or even a compact form of rutile. Now, if you're trying to identify rutile in the field, the best field features that you could use would be the specific gravity. It does have some weight to it. Those twinning or striation patterns that you might find in some of the crystals, like the one that I just showed you, and certainly the luster. That luster and the crystal shape should be helpful giveaways, and you can also do a hardness test to make sure it matches what you found. There are a few minerals that you could confuse with. Rutile, one of them could be garnet, but garnet has a lot of differences, including crystal shapes and varieties. So when you learn about garnet, you should be able to distinguish that from a piece or a crystal of rutile. Another one might be cassiterite, but that is a heavier mineral and it actually lacks that this lustrous look and the striations. So if you have a mineral a crystal that has that striation pattern, it's probably rutile, not cassiterite. Rutile has two main formation environments, one of which could be described as an igneous plutonic environment, and the other one that we often find rutile in are metamorphic regions. Now, this can be in regional metamorphic rocks, in blue schists, and in those environments, rutile will be associated with other minerals such as albite, lawsonite, and glaucophane. Now, the other metamorphic environment would be massive hydrothermal replacement deposits where it's often associated with the mineral pyrophyllite. Some interesting localities that you can find rutile would be Georgia in the United States. There are some really nice rutile crystals that have come from that region as well as some from Arkansas. Another well-known locality is in California where the Champion Company once mined materials for the manufacturing manufacture of spark plugs and rutile was well known uh, byproduct in that environment and that was a massive hydrothermal replacement environment in that case. And lastly, the Tiburon Peninsula is known for large one inch size prismatic crystals of rutile. And as far as uses, like I've already mentioned, rutile is a source of titanium. It's also used in the creation of ceramic glazes. So there you have it, rutile, a very interesting titanium dioxide mineral. If you want to learn more about other minerals, such as the ones I've mentioned that are associated with rutile, as well as lots of other minerals, I'll be talking about them here at Let's Go Geo. So simply check out the minerals playlist, see if your favorite ones are there. Stay tuned for more mineral updates and more geologic adventures. I'll see you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.